Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus continuing our series about rheumatology. We have had lots of videos before. We have talked about anti nuclear antibodies and anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies, also known as ANCA. We have talked about the rheumatoid factor. We have talked about anti CCP. We have talked about anti ribosomal P protein and anti U1 RNP. Today we'll talk about anti SSA, also known as anti Rho. First, do you know why we call them anti-SSA? By the way, SS stands for Jogren Syndrome. Oh, this is my first time to hear that. Okay, good. Now you're learning something. And A, because next we will talk about SSB. So we have SSA and SSB. SS stands for Jogren Syndrome. Where do you think we're going to find antibodies against SSA? Um, in a patient with Jogren Syndrome? Brilliant! Jogren syndrome, triad of dry eye, dry mouth, and arthritis. Also, anti-SSA are associated with kidney disease, as we will discuss now. With that being said, let's get started. These are just some of my rheumatology videos that I've talked about before. Guys, don't forget, you should subscribe and save this playlist, otherwise you're missing on all of this stuff. Rheumatology introduces itself. I'm a branch of science where no single blood test whatsoever can confirm the diagnosis. A good rheumatologist always asks himself or herself, does the lab test correlate with the clinical picture? Quick review, anti-nuclear antibodies, autoantibodies against the nucleus, and the titer is positive only if it's greater than 1 to 80. They are present in many diseases, so by definition they are not specific. The higher the titer, the more likely you have an autoimmune disease. The higher the titer does not correlate with the severity of the disease. Next, anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. If ANA were antibodies against the nucleus, ANCA are antibodies against the cytoplasm of what? Of neutrophils and monocytes associated with small vessel vasculitides. Again, they do not correlate with the symptoms or the severity. If anti-nuclear antibodies were antibodies against the nucleus and anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies were antibodies against the cytoplasm, rheumatoid factors are antibodies against antibodies. Crazy. Okay, more sensitive for rheumatoid arthritis, less specific, it does correlate. We're still talking about rheumatoid arthritis. How about anti-CCP? If rheumatoid factor was sensitive, anti-CCPs are specific. They are specific for rheumatoid arthritis. They are not sensitive, but they are very specific and they do correlate with disease activity. Let's leave rheumatoid land and let's go to lupus land anti-double-stranded dna specific subtype of ana it's not sensitive but it's very specific for lupus it does correlate with disease activity when you have flare you have lots of them when you treat the flare they decrease and don't forget patients taking tnf alpha inhibitors regardless of lupus can show anti double-stranded DNA antibodies in their plasma. Don't forget to trend the levels of anti-double-stranded DNA because guess what? Every patient is different. We're still reviewing the previous videos. Anti-Smith antibodies, again, very specific for lupus. Is it sensitive? No, it's garbage, not sensitive, but it's very specific for lupus. Only lupus patients can have positive anti-Smith antibody. Unlike anti-double-stranded DNA, anti-Smith do not correlate with disease activity. Anti-U1 RNP present in more than 95% of patients with mixed connective tissue disease. Therefore, it's very, very sensitive. Is it specific? No, because you can find it in mixed connective tissue disease as well as lupus. By definition, it's not specific. Rheumatology is all about pattern recognition. If you have a clinical picture of lupus, positive anti-double-stranded DNA, and positive anti-U1 RNP, don't say mixed connective tissue disease. It's clearly lupus. Come on, guys. Anti-ribosomal P protein. For what? For lupus. Is it sensitive? No. It's specific. Bloody? Yes. If you have patient with lupus and they have positive anti-ribosomal P protein, they are at higher risk of developing liver disease and CNS problems such as depression or psychosis. Actually, lupus can make you crazy. So here's a quick summary of lupus. 
lupus patient can have anti-double-stranded DNA, anti-Smith antibodies, anti-U1 RNP antibodies, and anti-arbosomal P protein antibodies. Specific, specific, not specific, specific. Which one correlates with lupus nephritis, anti-double-stranded DNA? Which one correlates with lupus vasculitis, anti-double-stranded DNA? Cool. Which one correlates with liver disease, anti-ribosomal P protein? Excellent. Which one correlates with psychosis or depression or cognitive impairment, anti-ribosomal P protein? I've told you in a previous video, video number six in this amazing playlist, that anti-SSA and anti-SSP are seen in lupus and Jogren syndrome. Both of them can be transferred from mommy to the baby, causing neonatal lupus and congenital heart block. Here's a heart that has been blocked. And my crazy musical mnemonic for it is A-R-O-B-I-L-A. Anti-SSA, anti-RO, this is actually the topic of today's video. Okay, we were just having an introduction. We were having a blast. SS is for Jogren syndrome. A, because we will have B. An anti-RO, I don't know why we call it anti-RO, but it happens that anti-SSA is anti-RO. Cool. Jogren and lupus. It's not sensitive because it's only present in 30 to 40 percent of patients with Jogren or lupus, so that's by definition more sensitive because you can have lupus and be in those unlucky 60 percent of patients that have lupus symptoms but they have negative anti SSA. By definition, this test is not sensitive. Is it specific? No, it's not specific. I don't believe you, okay? You should believe me because this test is positive in lupus, neonatal lupus, Jogren syndrome, Sika syndrome, and myositis. This is by definition not specific because it can be present in a bazillion diseases. If it happens in lupus, it's associated with lupus nephritis. Do you remember what other antibody was associated with lupus nephritis? Indeed, the anti-double-stranded DNA. So don't forget this. Both anti-double-stranded DNA and anti-SSA are associated with lupus nephritis. What else? In lupus, it's associated with skin disease. So if you have a patient who has lupus and they have anti-SSA and anti-double-stranded DNA, think lupus nephritis. If they have anti-SSA, also think skin disease. Okay, when a patient is anti-SSA positive, they're probably HLA-DR3 positive as well at the same time. We'll talk about this sucker in an upcoming video. Joe Grant plus anti-SSA in the same patient, you have an increased risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Don't ever, ever forget that. It's very important that patients with Joe Grant syndrome have an increased risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, especially when the anti-SSA, also known as anti-RO, is positive. Okay, for excellent students only, mediocre students need not apply. If a patient has lupus and positive for anti-SSA, but negative for anti-SSB, think lupus nephritis. When you have a patient with lupus nephritis, probably they will have symptoms of lupus, positive anti-SSA, negative anti-SSP, and positive anti-double-stranded DNA. So in lupus nephritis, you have anti-double-stranded DNA and or anti-SSA. Don't ever forget that. The kidney cries with either anti-double-stranded DNA or anti-SSA anti-RO. My 50 hematology cases are waiting for you on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. They are available for a limited number of students only. So don't miss out. You should master hematology so that you can help grandma with her essential thrombocytosis. I'm so grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Smash like, subscribe, save this rheumatology playlist. And don't forget, you can support this channel on Patreon. Get my 50 hematology cases and all of my notes that I'm drawing for my amazing slides that you're seeing right now. All of them are organized in Dropbox folders. You have to subscribe on Patreon in order for me to send you the Dropbox link. And it's going to be amazing. Thank you for watching as always. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard. In the next video, we're going to talk about the anti-SSP, also known as anti-law, also passed down from mommy to baby. 
causing congenital heart block and neonatal lupus. What a misfortune!